I am Jimmy Turner. I've been here at the Royal Botanic Garden of Sydney as Director of Horticultural Management for five years. You might notice this is not an Australian accent. I am a Texan. I got recruited to come here at this wonderful garden to have the best job in the absolute world. I get paid to do things I would do for free. Don't tell my boss. This isn't your normal type of exhibit. It's not like an art gallery. We go back into the archives and grab some stuff and hang it on the wall, or I go to Party City and buy some nice banners and balloons. This is an exhibit centered around living creatures that have to be beautiful every day for 11 months. So it takes a bit of work. It takes all the art and science that is horticulture to make this exhibit happen. This isn't just something we pulled out of the greenhouse and popped out for your pleasure today. This is something we've been growing for about 12 months. Now, when you're in the exhibit, you will see amazing plants that normally aren't on display. A lot of the Nepenthes and the Saracenia and the Venus flytraps and how they work and why they do what they do. But while you're there, also pay attention to some of the fun artwork and kooky and weird stuff we're doing. There will be glass pitcher plants hanging from the ceiling. There will be Nepenthes dripping off of upside down trees and hanging off plant racks like you see behind me here. Trying to get you engaged in what we're doing and why, but mainly just to get you excited about the world of plants. The big question I get a lot is how many plants are in the display? And it's a bit of a hard thing to tell because it's actually going to change over time. The wall, 18,090 plants. I know exactly because every spot in that wall has to be filled. Now the ground space, all total up in the space will have about 25,000 plants when we open. And we may be changing a few of those out and in during the exhibit. Some will go dormant, some will come out and bloom at different times. So the exhibit will actually change over the 11 months we're going. But all over the exhibit, one of the amazing things you're going to find out is these plants, if they're happy, they spread. They want more meat, they want more insects, they want more food. So the Venus flytraps will actually spread and get bigger. The Drosser, the native Australian um, little flypaper plants, sundews, they're about the size of a 50 cent piece, but they actually make these little things in the middle of them that pop off and make new plants. I might start out with 10, but I might end up with 10 million of them in the spot. They might actually go home with you on your little egg. So you never know the exhibit. I hope by the end of the exhibit, every bed is completely just filled with these plants, very happy crawling out of the beds, trying to reach over and grab a leg. How are we going to feed carnivorous plants? Carnivorous plants have to have insects. Actually, they don't. The good thing is they did evolve to eat insects, and some of them eat bat poop, and some of them eat shrew poo. But for the most part, if we give them fertilizer through organic fertilizer or liquid fertilizer, they don't need it that way. Now, we will be doing a bit of um, feeding time. If you're willing to come by one day, and we'll have that on our website, you can actually come and watch us feed these plants, but it's not necessary for them to survive as long as we feed them. Now, one of the sad things is the calyx actually does get a bit of insects. Any poor roach that wanders into that place is a goner. Fruit flies, fungus gnats, anything that buzzes or flies at night might not leave the exhibit. What excites me most about this display, these plants have a really good nightmare after dark kind of fun story, but it's letting the public see, people who don't work in the world I do, what we understand and what we see, how cool plants are. They're not just green things you put on your coffee table to live a few weeks and die. They're not just that apple you bought in the store to eat or a bit of lettuce or some grass you walked over. These are plants with a purpose. These are things that actually evolved a very definite mechanism, but all plants do. It's just this group happens to be really cool and engaging. And my hope is maybe one or two kids who walk through there someday might want to stand in my shoes and do what I do for a living, or might want to be a scientist or conservation to do something to save plants. And our vital science program we're running here at the garden pretty much says no plants, no people. Well, no plants, no animals, no plants, no air. Plants are the building block of all life on this planet. Without plants, we don't exist. And these stories are important because it teaches people how to preserve them and why that conservation and preservation is important.